everybody, I'm Nicker. Welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where I go over bad advice given in places like LinkedIn, X, or even blogs, and I try to use it as a teaching moment and turn it into good advice. Now, in this video, I have one of the worst posts I've ever seen, and unsurprisingly, it was on LinkedIn. And what really surprised me is how popular it was. There was an incredible amount of reactions saying, yeah, that was a great idea. But actually, it's some of the worst I've ever seen. And the advice is this. As always, this is about the advice, not about the author. However, I do want to point out that this is extra harmful because the author sells themselves and presents themselves as a testing and TDD expert. So if you have a testing audience like that, and then you say, avoid using mocking libraries, then that's bad. So let's first see the code. What we have here is the bad do not use this, where we have a user and then we have an I user store, which is a mock. So clearly we're using a mock queue here. And then we have a user service, which gets the user store. So that user store is sort of like the database of it all. And then we activate the user and we verify that the user has been activated. Okay. I see some things wrong with this, but not on the testing level. I see some things that are wrong on the actual code level, but I'm going to talk about that in a second. What I want to show you here is the solution. Don't use mocks, use fakes. Now, in case you don't know what fakes are, fakes are custom implementations of the abstractions that your code depends on. So if I have an I user store, this is an interface, meaning I can implement my own class and I can have a user store, or I can also have a fake user store because I have a database here. I don't want to go straight to the database because that sort of messes up my unit tests and they're not even unit tests if they go to a database. So instead, I'm going to make a fake or I'm going to make a mock, which is sort of taking the same concept and advancing it even further to make it more user friendly and give a better developer experience. So ultimately, the outcome is the same. It's to not go to the actual database in this case or any of the dependencies you might have on the hard drive, on network, on another API, on any of those. So what you should do instead, according to this post, is to use a fake. So have the user, user store fake. Now, if this screams red flag as a side note, because we just have a new user and no parameters, then you're correct. You would never set up a test like this. This is the, the loosest of loose tests I've ever seen. Unit tests need to be very targeted and this or even this mega bad. Don't write tests like this. They're very, very flaky. But ultimately what we have is the user, we use a store, we pass the user store into the service and then we activate and then we reallocate the user instead of just retrieving it and comparing it, which is very weird. Maybe you can make an argument that I only want to check the is active property, but th this is just terrible, terrible code all around. Now, I always make sure I include as much context as was given on that LinkedIn post. So that's what the author wrote, which is a clean code tip, avoid using mocking libraries. So that's a clean code tip for some reason, which completely disagree. I'm so confused. Create your own fakes instead. Mocking libraries have ugly syntax and too much coupling to implementation. What? This is such an insane statement to make. You can dislike how they look, but th what coupling to implementation are you talking about? I totally don't understand what this even means. They can be useful sometimes like verifying interactions, but most developers overuse them uh, leading to fragile tests. I think that is true. I do believe that this is the only true statement throughout the entire post that developers do actually abuse mocks quite a bit. For example, if you're mocking your uh, iMapper from AutoMapper or any other mapper you might have, uh, then your tests are not great. Or if you're mocking the abstract validator for fluent validation, there's trouble here too. You have to be very careful with how you do it. There is trouble there too. You shouldn't mock those. You should mock their dependencies because that's part of your unit, that's part of your logic. It's one of those things I see people keep doing wrong when I run workshops around the world. And by the way, link in the description if you want to see where I will be this year. But People keep making this mistake and then eventually when we fix it and we make their tests more robust, they totally understand why that was an issue. And if you want a video on that topic, leave a comment down below and I will make it. But it's something I talk about in my courses and I've talked about it, I think, in previous videos about testing as well. Mocking is in fact abused. This is a problem, but this is not the solution to that problem. Then it's also better to have a single fake description of a dependency instead of hundreds of mocks it's assuming different things about the dependency. As a bonus, a test with fake will contain less code. 
what I okay. So the last statement is true, but you have to write that code in your fake. So any code you save in the mock, you have to write in the fake and even more. Let me show you what I mean. Let's see some code. But before we do that, I'd like to let you know that we just launched our back to school discount on Dome Train. So until the end of September, you can get 30% off any of our courses, including the three courses we just launched, Boosting Developer Productivity with AI, amazing course by Kevin Docs, Configuration and Option in .NET by Microsoft Senior Content Developer David Pine, and Reflection in .NET by Nick Constantino. Not only that, but you can also use code BTS15 to get 15% off any of our already discounted bundles or BTS20 to get 20% off our annual Dome Train Pro subscription. Do not miss this with all of us coming back from holiday. This is a unique opportunity to invest in your learning for 2024, 2025. Let me show you what I have here in the code. I have this library code I wrote and I try to replicate exactly what this user had. In fact, if I go to the tests and I go to the user service tests, I have both the mock version over here exactly as it is in that code base and I have the fakes as well. And if I go and I run both tests, they are both passing, by the way. So they're both valid unit tests. Now, I do want to point out that this is not how I would write this test or how we would write this original code in the first place. I tried to get as close as I could with exactly what the user provided, but they didn't provide the entire code. So I tried to get as close as possible. But you can see here in the user store, I have my iUser store interface. I have a list of users, which this person is showing in their example, but I don't quite understand why you would have a list of users and not a get all users. I think the reason why they did this is because this code isn't really real code and it doesn't really make much sense the moment you start looking into it. But I did look into it because it's advice given on the internet and so many people are looking at this. Um, so I tried to get as close by having a list of users, which is a computed value based on the get users private method I made over here. Then I have a database. So we are actually replacing the real database with that in-memory implementation. Now on the mocking side of things, it's all very simple. I have a new mock I use the store, all makes sense. And then I have a mock found by any ID, which is not by the way what I would do because you're not setting up any GUID. What you're setting up here is that specific GUID that the user has. So terrible advice, bad, 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 flaky test. You should just pass down the GUID itself. It's much better. And because the GUID is a struct, you don't even have to do anything fancy over here. You can just say user.id. And if you run this test, it will pass, as you can see, because the value is copied. If the value you have in here was a reference type, then you would have to say it is what type in this case it's a good then you would have to do more checks so if i do user dot id this will also work and this will also work for reference types again if you want to know more about this i cover all that in my unit testing course that being said i'm not really an moq or moq user i'm more of an n substitute person so that's the only library i really know all the best practices but that's all to say that yeah okay you have this mock and verify approach because verify will also make sure that this method was called exactly once but then that person hits you with this fake version and how does this fake version work well if we go into the fake which by the way this person did not show anywhere but i implemented anyway so if we go into the fake the fake implements the same interface exactly the same thing that your mock will do behind the scenes by the way because the mock using a library will create an in-memory proxy implementation of that interface you're passing down or that abstract class which is why they work in the first place and then I did the exact same thing as presented where they're passing down a user in the constructor, which I'm assuming is stored in memory. And then I have an in-memory implementation of that class. So that's your fake. That's really all there is to it. And by the way, if you want to grab the code, I'm going to put the link in the description. You can just download it. But that's all there is to it. The problem is that the moment you write more than one test, you will need to handle that use case in the fake. So Yes, if you have 50 tests, you might need to do a setup 50 times in 50 different ways in each test, but that's exactly for that test and it stays in the test. But then if you have a fake store over here, you will have all the logic. You might say that, for example, if user with ID is, and then you have a specific good, then do this. If 
user exactly as you would do in your mocks. So if it's that, then this, if it's that, then this, and all of those cases will be here in this single class and you would have zero visibility. Is there room for fakes? Yes. Do people have used mocks? Yes. To make a statement like this is good and this is bad is ridiculous. Just stop. Please don't listen to this and please don't just react to everything you see on LinkedIn. The algorithm is so broken, it's just boosting anything. <sighs> but now I know from you. What do you think about this? And do you have any opinions? Leave a comment down below and let me know. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding. Jesus Christ, that was so bad.